All right, we're moving on to assignment five. So instead of going right to assignments, let's introduce it through the weekly modules. We have just finished our midterm critique, and now we're starting our first original spot illustration. So I'm going to go to unit 11. There are a lot of new ideas here that go well beyond compositing and well beyond just kind of black shape vector logos. So we're going to be creating an original free floating spot illustration, the kind of thing you would see at the beginning of a chapter in a book that floats on its own. So it does not fill a rectangle. It's appropriate for a sticker design or a tattoo design, something you would want to stick on a skateboard. So all the edges should be interesting. And we're going to work with digital inking to create vector line work that will be incredibly clean and professional at any size. So a clean read at any size. And then we're going to use raster imaging, Photoshop or PhotoP, to color behind it, behind the vector, like coloring stained glass. We're going to develop sketching and concept development before we commit to making those vector lines because those can, can be a, a chore. We're going to understand the advantages and disadvantages of the different ways we can get to vector line work, including raster inking versus vector inking. And then we're going to learn, this will be once we get our vector line work, but basic literacy and competency at digital coloring. So the differences between flat color, duotone color, hard edge and soft edge color, full spectrum color, color holds and special effects. All of those will be done on different layers. We'll give you a kind of a nice disciplined workflow for how to color something that is consistent with what professional standards are. And we're going to be introduced to new digital formats so that we can use vectors and raster together in ways that are non-destructive. We're going to look at some past instructor and student examples. I'm also going to demo, demo you through uh, an example for this semester and put those up to our YouTube page. And by the end of it, we'll have assignment five finished. It will have a sketch. It will have black vector line work. And it will be a full colored version. Those are the three things you need to have a, a full, meet all the requirements. So looking at some examples, I choose a different theme every semester. Sometimes we do caricatures, sometimes we do monsters, sometimes we do masks. But you'll see these are the three things that we're going to deliver by the end. Our sketch, not just a thumbnail sketch, but a pretty refined sketch that shows the proportions and the size clean line art that's digitally inked, preferably as a vector, and then digital coloring, which will be rasterized. And we're going to learn lots of ways to do digital coloring, including a halftone screening, though we might get to that as we finish these off in next assignment when we make a poster. All right, so lots of fun examples. Notice that all of these do not fill a rectangle. They all have an interesting silhouette shape, and they're just floating on an empty white background. That's what makes them a spot illustration. We are not going to include text in these unless you are directed to, because we will take these spot illustrations, and then in our next assignment, we will add text to them to make a poster. You can see more examples at these links and past tutorials. All right, so in creating a spot illustration, I'll, I'll share with you what the theme is and you all know what you're trying to draw. But what you have to decide pretty early on is what kind of vector line work best suits your idea. And these are by a, an artist from Oregon named Nathan Yoder, whose work I really like. It's really clean commercial work. And he has kind of four approaches he offers to his clients. 
for any kind of logo he designs or illustration he designs. He has a stippling approach, he has a thick hatching approach, he has a graphic approach, and he has a gestural approach. What we're doing for this project is a coloring book, and it's a coloring book aimed at second graders. So we're gonna do a mix of graphic, where the lines are really thick and strong for a coloring book, with a little bit of gesture so that it's not so diagonal and sharp. It's gonna be a little softened, more like a cartoon. What we are not going to do, because it's a coloring book, is add shading into our inking, right? Because you want the people who are coloring the page to be able to add their own shading. So we're not going to add stippling, we're not going to add lots of hatching, and we're not going to add this kind of in-between, you know, rough uh, imitation of graphite shading. Instead, we're going to keep it nice, clean, and open. And once we have our line work, then we'll figure out the best way to color it because a coloring book should be colored in any way you want. So that will be up to you, how much color you want to use, how crazy you want it to get, how textural you want it to get, or how flat and graphic you want it to be. A good way of thinking of spot illustrations is as tattoos. The way you do a tattoo is you first do the line art, and then you do the color around that. So that is what we're doing with this project. We start with a sketch, then we convert that sketch into refined, refined vector line work, and then we use raster pixel-based coloring behind that vector line, line art. This is pretty straightforward and simple, but it can also be done in a really complicated way. So here is a really complicated shaded sketch that then needs to be traced into vector outlines. You can see all the anchors there. You have the vector outline, and then the, the coloring goes behind that, like a stained glass window. It's always good to have inspiration references for you. So since we're doing a coloring book, looking at coloring book inspirations, some of you are working on a campus cartoon map as part of that coloring book, looking at kids' menus, things like that, that might have maps, treasure maps. These are all good inspirations. And a lot of you are doing versions of our campus mascot, Nico the Nighthawk, finding references and images to inspire you of Nico and of maybe other kind of coloring books of anthropomorphized birds might be helpful. And again, we're doing it in these steps. A refined sketch, that's what you're working on now, turning that into clean line work through digital inking, that's what I'm going to be showing you, and then eventually coloring behind that, though we won't be starting that until next class. So our theme, it's a coloring book called Welcome to the Nest. And this is a service learning project to support um, our Adopt-a-School initiative on campus. And so these books will be given out for free to second grade classrooms within the Judson School District. And these classes will be invited to come onto campus, meet Nico the mascot, and tour the campus. So the idea is that this coloring book gets them excited about what they'll see on campus. I am going to be demoing spot illustrations that help with the design of the cover. And then in the next assignment, assignment six, I'll be demonstrating how to do type design with the, the type title flag of this coloring book, which is called Welcome to the Nest. There are two spot illustrations on the cover and one title flag illustration. So one is Nico flying over the campus like about to land, and the other is an image of the campus, right? So I've roughed these up. I did first a really rough sketch where I would want Nico flying, where I would want campus, and then I did more refined sketches here. And these refined sketches, they just, I do it just with traditional pencil. You could do this digitally as well. But when you're sketching, you want to keep in mind that because it's for a coloring book, you really want to simplify as much as possible. So in my sketch, I went a little overboard with the wing. I like it. It's cool. It might be a cool tattoo for a wing, but for a coloring book, that's just way too much going on. So as part of refining your sketch, 
I just took it into Photoshop and I cleaned it up and erased some of the wing and then like thickened the outline around it. Things like that. So once you have a refined sketch like this, then we can move on to the vector. And there's a few ways we can get a refined sketch. I'm just going to do a screen, screen grab of this. Now, in terms of simplifying, there's lots of you know, references of Nico. And I simplified it quite a bit, so there's a lot of open space to color. For campus, this got about as complicated as an illustration can get for a coloring book with a lot of different line weights. And that's because it's trying to show a lot of depth and a lot of dimension. So the key is to simplify as much as possible. Here I try to compress the whole campus, the student commons, the clock tower, the library, the campus green, the little cupola thing we have on the campus green, the wall that leads onto campus, even butterflies, trees, plants, a little extra pizzazz, all to make it an exciting sticker that can represent the campus. By no means, when I'm asked to do a spot illustration of the NLC campus, do I need to draw every building accurately and every feature in between the buildings accurately? Because that just doesn't make a good sticker, right? So that's what you want to keep in mind with your sketching. Each of you has chosen an image from the master plan here to illustrate. Some of you are doing buildings to support the campus map. Some of you are doing uh, different focal points on campus. Some of you are doing Nico doing certain character things like gathering eggs or hatching or graduating with a, with a blank silhouette of a student, right? So these are the options. All the options in black have been claimed. So you know what you're doing. The ones in red are still open for those who haven't picked an option yet. And then I did gave you a little close-up of the mock-up book. And what's important to note in the, uh, the illustrations I give you is that this is what's called a blocking sketch. It shows you the size and space that your illustration will take up. So for instance, with Nico in the boat, if that illustration gets any wider, it's not going to look good on that vertical page. So if anything, knowing the context, you'll see the text that goes with your images. Knowing the context of it, knowing which side of the double page spread it's on, all of that will help you design your, your look. It is designed so that the eye wants to change, wants to um, turn the page, but then gets landing sites so that it hovers around certain images, especially towards the end until eventually they can picture themselves graduating with our campus mascot. All right. So I am going to demonstrate with the cover illustration. So let's see, let, I'm going to start a new, a new reply here at the bottom. So I put my name in and then I'm going to upload into Canvas. It's a good way to show me how you're starting on the project. I'm going to upload my sketch. This is my refined sketch. This can be drawn by hand and you, you scan it or you take a, a photo of it. And you can refine your sketch in multiple ways. I also took my pencil sketch, which I showed you, this one, and I just put a piece of blank uh, printing paper on top of it, held it up to a window and used a Sharpie marker on another piece of printing paper. And I scanned it in at the back of our lab and put it to our class Dropbox. just posted that scanned image to the class Dropbox, and then I can download it to my computer to work with as well. So any way you can get a refined sketch. The next video will be about how to 
start turning that into vector line work. 